Welcome back. It is Monday, August 14th, and the MLB, our three favorite picks are on the way. It's Austin joined by Logan. Let's recap yesterday. Another wonderful day, a four and one day. Let's talk about it. We had the Nerfie in the Yankees Marlins game. One of the weirder Nerfies that we've had to watch was pretty sweat free, but a weird Nerfie. If you watch it, you know what it means. Vlad Vladimir Guerrero Jr. gets us two bases. We had that web three plus strikeouts on the full game under eight and a half. Pretty sweat free there, too. You had to go into extra innings naturally. When we take an under, we always go into extras, but it did cash pretty sweat free. And then Riley Green and Hassan Kim each got a hit. Our only loss, actually. Sadly, was the wagon that is Trey Turner two plus bases. His streak came to an end. Technically, his hit streak did not. So he still got one single. But hey, we can't be mad. If someone's going to sell the sweep, Trey Turner, I think, had cash for six or seven straight days in a row. We can't be too, too mad there. But a 15 and three run, a great, great run we've been on so far. And let's continue that going into Monday. It's a weird slate. We only got three clicks. We won't have an added one. Two of them, we actually have to update the odds in the pinned comment. But on a brighter note, we do have a hit parlay on Dimers, and it's a three-leg hit parlay, which we've hit three straight in a row all last week. We've hit five of our last six, so we've been dominating these hit parlays. That one's a three-leg one. It's the top link in the description. Go check it out. We'll actually talk about one of the hitters in it today in one of our actual plays. But either way, let's hit another hit parlay on those. We don't track those towards a record, although, Logan, I think we wish we were tracking them towards a record, how hot they've been recently. But you got another base prop, and unfortunately, you cannot bet Trey Turner today as he does not play. But I like the guy you picked. Who are you going with today? Yeah, I had to, I had to do some work. I couldn't just auto bet Trey Turner today. But I'm, I got a base prop that I do really like. And I'm taking Jose Altuve of the Astros over one and a half bases plus 100 odds on Caesars, currently your best value. Now I know everyone, the, the player everyone loves to boo. No one likes Altuve. But I think Altuve has a really good matchup versus the lefty Braxton Garrett today against Garrett. Altuve seen him before. He's one for three, hitting 333 with a double. So you like to see the extra base hit in there. And against lefties, Altuve's hitting 438 in his last eight games. So I mean, I mean, that's that's just a ridiculous average. That's it's one of those like hit percentage rates that I, I definitely want to take a guy like that. And righties have been Braxton Garrett's weakness, allowing a 271 batting average to righties compared to only a 229 opponent's batting average to lefties. So there were some obvious power hitting lefties or good base prop lefties in this Astros game because you I always like to look at Tucker and I always like to look at Jordan Alvarez just see what they're at and the books really think Braxton Garrett will probably have their number today so that immediately made made me go to the righty because I do like the righty lefty matchup uh, that we've got with Altuve if you look at Braxton Garrett at home he has not been great at home this year 5.4 ERA and a 284 opponents batting average at home this year so Braxton Garrett for whatever reason just hasn't pitched well at, you know in in Miami and Altuve has cashed this over in four out of his last five games. Yesterday, Altuve went hitless. That broke his 14-game hit streak. Well, that just means it's time to start a new one today for, for Altuve. And, you know, it starts with maybe a leadoff double, leadoff home run. In any, any way Altuve can be a menace to the nerfy, I'm, I'm here for that. Because I know if, if we were on this nerfy, I know Altuve would be a menace somehow. And even when Braxton Garrett comes out of this game, the Marlins bullpen has several arms in there that are liable to give up hits. I've watched plenty of late game Marlins baseball. And I'll tell you right now, there's just not a whole lot of bullpen arms that I'm just like super scared of. So batting leadoff and batting on the road, Altuve will get his maximum amount of plate appearances today. And I, I think he's a really good bet to make. So I'm going to go ahead and take him over one and a half bases. But Austin, what are you rolling with today? Yeah, be before we dive into our hit parlay, I do want to talk about my game pick, which I've been scorching hot over the past few days. And it's going to be similar to yesterday when we took Logan Webb's, you know, strikeout prop a little bit, alt line plus an under. And we're going to go to actually the same game. It's going to be the Giants game, but they're facing the Rays today in the start of a new series. And this is the same game parlay I'm going with. Tyler Glass now of the Rays to get six plus strikeouts. So we need six at minimum. And then also the full game under eight and a half runs. The only problem with this one, I don't have any odds. DraftKings currently down for maintenance as we record this. So we're going to update the pin comment with the odds that this one will be. I don't imagine this being too juiced. The regular line was about seven and a half for not only a strikeouts, but also the full game under. So I think kind of reducing and raising that line uh, one way or another is going to be a good way to play it. So just check the pin comment for the official odds. If we could somehow get plus money on this, I'd love that. I don't expect it to be plus money, probably in that minus 110, minus 120 range. But let's talk about Glass now first, who we're going to need six plus strikeouts from. Like I said, Vandal will randomly had his line at six and a half and if you caught it this morning congrats you got a great line because it's going to end at seven and a half would not surprise me if it went up to eight and a half because glass now six plus k's and all 12 starts this year at glass now 97th percentile and k percentage and whiff percentage this is the guy that's when he's when he's getting on his a game he's getting the swings and misses and even if he's not pitching too well that's how he gets his outs and this is a giants team that we just watched yesterday 
Strike out 13 times. I mean, Dane Dunning master class. He had 12 or 13 strikeouts. This team just was not seeing the ball well, and they don't think that just randomly switches overnight. This is a team that I really don't trust a whole lot to get to class now. You look at his earned runs prop, sitting at a big one and a half, juiced on the under, minus 130. So the books clearly expect him to pitch well. No one on the Giants has a record to hit odds better than minus 195. So the books are clearly thinking that Glass now comes out of here and pitches decently. And, you know, we got some wiggle room with the full game under eight and a half, but I think Glass now can go out there and get a six Ks. I, like I talked about yesterday, last 14 days giants lowest batting average lowest ops and lowest wrc plus versus right-handed pitchers last hour righty i think they struggle versus him i'm comfortable fading this giants offense after what i saw out of them yesterday proud of them for getting the walk off two run home run and not forcing an 11th inning but still i just don't have a lot of faith in this offense and like i said yesterday when you go up against righties they're going to stack some lefties which is smart to stack lefties against glass now that's his much worse split but at the same time, those lefties are not that great, and they strike out a lot. You saw the bottom of the lineup just swinging and missing at every one of Dunning's pitches. So I like him to come in here and pitch pretty well. Now, on the other side, we need Glass now to get those six Ks, but also keep the game low scoring. And same thing for the Giants. They're going to start a reliever and Ryan Walker. Now, lucky for Walker, he's actually started a couple games before. So it's not like when we picked a Michael King Nerfy a couple days ago. That was his first start ever for a game in, like, I think two years. Walker's been starting a couple games here. But the more important thing is after Walker is only going to pitch one or two innings, who's going to come in after? After him, and I actually think it's going to be our menace to society, Sean Manaya. And I don't like Manaya at all. I don't think he's that great, but I think Walker can get us a decent start 2.40 ERA and a 1.19 whip. But it comes at Manaya. Now, Manaya. I don't love him, like I said, but he has been better at home. 3.96 ERA and a 1.09 whip, allowing a 2.21 batting average. If you go to his stats on the road, yeah, not great. But over his last five outings, he's been decent. Actually, better than decent. A 0.77 ERA and a 0.108 batting average allowed. So he's been really good. And the biggest thing I like about Manaya is that he's a lefty going up against the Rays offense that has been struggling versus lefties, to say the least. Now, over the last 14 days, uh, pause on the 14 for Mr. Wander Franco, but the Rays have the fifth lowest batting average, sixth lowest OPS, and eighth lowest WRC plus for slept in pitchers. On a joke side, I don't really know what's going on with Wander Franco. I don't know if he plays today, but either way, even if he does play or doesn't, I'm not too worried about the Rays offense has been struggling versus lefties. End of the day, Manaya is not going to pitch you no know, seven innings pitch. He's going to go out there, probably throw three, four innings pitch. And I like a, a Giants team going with a bullpen game because you're starting with a right handed pitcher and Ryan Walker, immediately switching it to a lefty. So they're going righty to lefty. If their switch hitters are going to be batting on different sides of the plate, it's hard to find a little bit of a rhythm in that game. And we've seen the Giants, we just talked about their bullpen yesterday, top 10 bullpen over the last you know two weeks. The Rays bullpen has not been good over the last couple weeks, but I think last time get us a good head start on you know getting this full game under eight and a half. We need the bullpen to hold it down if they want to sell and give up a couple runs and lose the game outright it's probably where it comes but i think glass now pitches well i think walker and probably mania pitches well like i said if mania doesn't come in that's fine with me but i think he's gonna pitch today he hasn't pitched in about four or five days and normally when walker starts the last two times he started mania is the guy that comes in right after him i think they like to do that righty to lefty switch so i really like the full game under this one at eight and a half i like glass now strikeout prop i don't necessarily love taking strikeout props at seven and a half but i think he can easily get a six which he's done in all the starts but look it is time for a hit parlay and i'm gonna dive into the first leg of this one i'll let you hit the second leg who's actually going to be under hit parlay it's going to be the first leg it's gonna be a guy by the name of jack jeff mcneil the mets and then austin riley logan will tackle in a little bit who's in our hit parlay on dimers so make sure you go check that out but let's talk about this one yesterday's hit parlay was as easy as it gets i mean both guys got a hit in their first damn bat I don't necessarily know we'll get a hit parlay that sweat free again. It's tough to do that, but let's talk about McNeil, who it's hard to trust the Met to do anything right, but hey, McNeil's been doing really well recently. Getting back to that groove that we saw from him last year when he was always on base. McNeil, that 259 on the season, but has a hit in seven straight games and he's hitting 370 over that time span. Coming off a three hit game last night on Sunday Night Baseball. They're staying at home today, which I like to see. McNeil's batting 284 at home this year. He's been really good at home and that's where he finds himself today. Now, a great thing about McNeil is I, he's not one of those guys that's trying to do too much with the baseball. This is a guy, McNeil, when you see his hits, normally mostly singles, and that's what we kind of want. We don't need a guy that's trying to hit a home run every time he's up. And it's also McNeil, 99th percentile on K percentage. So it doesn't strike out a whole lot, like a 10% strikeout rate, and he's only 30th percentile on walk percentage. So very similar to a guy like Luis Arise. I mean, I'm not comparing them, you know, in that sense, but in terms of their success this season, but still a guy that doesn't strike out a lot, puts the ball in play. That's all you can ask for with a guy like McNeil to find one of those gaps, especially against the Pirates defense. I really don't have a lot of faith in to you know make the right play but quinn priester is going to start for the pirates he's allowing a 360 batting average to lefties mcneil is a lefty and i just think mcneil will be able to get us at least one hit extend that hit streak to eight games i think he can get it done but logan i'll let you talk about austin riley 
Yeah, our, our COS Hall of Famer, Austin Riley. Everyone, you know, was remembering Trey Turner. He's, he's been on our minds. But Austin Riley has been really good for this channel as well. And he I like his matchup versus Clark Schmidt today. Riley, first off, batting 285 versus righties and 311 at home. Austin Riley's just been ridiculous at home. And he's had a hit in nine straight home games. Hopefully, he can make it 10 for us today. And Clark, if you look at his, his pitch mix, he doesn't use the fastball, which is actually kind of decent for us because, you know, with the, the righty-righty matchup, and that's a pitch that Austin Riley does struggle with is the fastball. But Schmidt throws the sweeper, cutter, sinker, and curve. Well, Austin Riley has just absolutely crushed those pitches. 278, 360, 327, 387 against all those pitches, respectively. Look, Austin Riley, after I looked at his pitch mix uh, that, that Clark Schmidt's going to throw, I'm like, hmm. Maybe he's a two-plus basis type candidate. Because, I mean, at home, Austin Riley's just absolutely been raking. I think, at bare minimum, he should be able to get us a hit today. And hopefully, the flying squirrel, Jeff McNeil, can also get it done for us. Yeah, like, I didn't mention this when I when we talked about the pick, but we don't have odds for McNeil yet, so stay tuned to the pinned comment. We obviously already have odds for Jose Altuve. We need two bases out of that fella. But then McNeil and Riley will update that pinned comment with the odds, as well as the Tyler Glass now in the full game under 8.5, same game parlay. We'll update the pinned comment there. But those are just going to be our three plays. That, like I said, a very weird slate on a Monday. It's also the first game of a lot of these series, so we really want to take it slow. We know we were doing, you know, five picks on the weekend, but... Uh, this this slate is not worthy of taking five picks. Let's have three. Let's try to get a three and O day, or at worst a two and one day, and we'll move on to Tuesday, Dinger Tuesday, when we have some picks tomorrow. But Logan, let's have a great day. No nerfy today. Maybe the nerfies will return in the future. But let's have a three and O day. We'll see you guys back in tomorrow for some more picks. If you want to check out some other videos, and the hit parlay is linked on the screen. Go check it out. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.